Hello everyone, I just wanted to give you guys some long-term impressions on the very popular Spyderco Endura 4. I'll show you this beautiful knife here. Now, this is the model with the full flat ground blade here. If you can see that there, this has the VG10 steel. Takes a very, very nice edge relatively easily it's an easy steel to sharpen uh, relative to some other steels I'll show here in a second um, I have this sharpened up with uh, an 18 degree uh, angle on each side okay so that makes for a 36 degree uh, inclusive angle uh, very sharp it's uh, polished down to uh, 3.5 micron I'm not sure if you guys can see the mere uh, polish it has on the edge there. But uh, this is definitely one of the sharpest blades I've had. This is capable of whittling hairs. Um, yeah, I love this blade. I have a ton of use on this knife. This is a knife I've carried for uh, maybe two, three years. Uh, this is one of the first uh, high quality knives I bought getting into the whole uh, knife collecting scene. Um, so just to show you here, this uh, knife has a 4 inch handle, uh, I believe it comes in at just around 4 ounces, so relatively light knife for what you're getting in this package. Uh, my model here has the blue FRN handle scales, which is like a plastic handle scales. Um, it has this uh, pyramid texturing, so see if we can uh, see that nicely on here. So if you're pulling back on the back of the handle, it provides some traction there. Uh, and it has the exact opposite traction pattern on the front of the knife, if you can see that there. So when you're pushing forward on this traction, uh, it resists the movement. So the uh, change is right at the middle and it changes radially outwards. So back provides you from slipping um, back and the forward provides you from slipping even more forward on the knife. Uh, this knife has a great uh, set of jimping on the back spine. Now, uh, the jimping over here... Uh, on either side of the lock bar it is actually functional uh, it's raised up as you can see just just a little bit above the steel from the lock bar um, which is nice because it does actually give you some traction there but most of the time when I use this knife and if I'm going to be using the jimping my hand is going to be all the way choked up and I'm going to be right on this big thumb ramp here for this knife and that provides you with a great purchase of traction on this knife um, it's not going anywhere uh, that's why you'll hear a lot of people, as I'm sure you've heard in other reviews, uh, say this can be used as an improvised tactical blade if you choose to do so. Um, very uh, diverse knife in the sense that you can uh, position the pocket clip on all four sides of the blade for tip up, tip down, right hand or left hand to carry. You can see uh, this comes standard with the black coated uh, clip on here. You can see mine is a decent amount of wear on it, even though I try my best to keep that in good condition just from scraping around when you're carrying it in your pocket um, relatively low carry when this knife uh, is completely in your pocket about this much blade sticks out here so just enough for you to actually get a good hold of it get a good pinch on that and you can bring that out of your pocket pretty easily there um, deployment on this knife is good it's it came somewhat stiff and uh, I actually haven't taken this knife apart yet, and I'll show you how dirty this is in a second. But the deployment is quite good on this. It's quite fast. Let me see if I can do it even without the uh, wrist flick there. So yeah, it, it comes out quite smoothly. Actually, I don't know if you can hear this. That little sticking it's doing uh, right when I press the lock bar. I, I use this for food all the time, and uh, I guess maybe this got something sticky there. So that's something I should clean up there. So I'll see if you can hear it one more time here. Just that little bit of sticking there. Other than that, the knife is very smooth to open. I don't feel any grit in there. Let me show you the inside of the knife here, as you can see. So this does actually have fully milled out stainless steel liners in here. So that does save a little bit of weight in there. Um, it's not open pillar design. Obviously, it's a lockback. So when you do have some dust in here, you can just take a can of compressed air and spray it in there and uh, should be able to get a lot of the dust out. Um, let me just grab a light here, see if I can shed some light on the amount of dust in this knife here. So quite a bit as you can tell. But hey, that just goes to show and gets used.
And I like to use my knife, so that's good. Now, just going to talk about the deployment hole for one second. This is something that just took a small amount of getting used to for me. Uh, it's not the easiest knife to flick out with, but uh, with some practice, uh, it will get better. This is not a knife that, uh, for me, uh, I can flick out with my middle finger there, as you see some people do. Even after having this knife for a long time, it's not something I do. But uh, you get better with the normal deployment there, and this actually deploys pretty quickly. So... Um, and one more note on deployment, uh, you'll see a lot of people, they do the little mod where they put a little zip tie on the back here, and that acts as kind of a little extra tang, uh, similar to a little extra tang sticking out on the blade of this cold steel tie light. So the way that works is as you pull the uh, knife out of your pocket, you pull this against the interior sleeve of your pocket, and it pinches there. So as you pull it with some authority, the knife will pop out as you're pulling it out of your pocket. So that's one little modification you can do with a little zip tie. They also sell the Enduras with the uh, Emerson Wave function um, coming with it. So that's another option if you wanted to look for a knife specifically with that feature. If not, if you just wanted the standard uh, leaf shape blade, uh, you can grab one of these and throw on a zip tie and, and see how you like that for that modification. Um, next to that, I mean, the lockup on this knife is quite good. There's no up and down play. But there is some side-to-side -side play, and maybe that's from the little bit of abuse I've given this knife. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, actually, you see a little bit of gap opening up there. Let me see if I can focus this better. So as I rock it, you see a little bit of uh, light coming through here, just goes to show. It moves a decent amount side-to-side. -side. Um, but like I said, up and down... There's no lock, or sorry, there's no uh, wiggle in that direction. That's a solid lockup. Um, what else can I say? With this is, uh, uh, so I have done some hard use with this. I've cut some pretty abrasive ropes. I've done a lot of cardboard cutting. I used to work in retail, and this was the knife I would bring to work with me every day. And this would be shredding up boxes all day. Uh, VG10 steel holds up quite good uh, against cardboard. I know uh, cardboard takes a toll on a lot of. Uh, different blade steels because cardboard is a uh, quite abrasive material but uh, VG10 does well and to touch this up on my Wicked Edge literally takes maybe 5-10 minutes and I get a screaming sharp edge back here because with, with the uh, Wicked Edge you record what angles you previously sharpened it at so once you've sharpened your blade once you're, the subsequent sharpenings are quite easy and quite quick um, yeah so in terms of the hard use for this knife yeah it's seen a lot of cardboard cutting I, I've just for pure novelty, I've tried uh, chopping through some thin logs uh, about maybe two and a half inches in diameter, three inches in diameter. And uh, I'll be honest, the knife did okay. Um, there was some hot spots, um, and that was causing me some discomfort in this. Uh, going through the chopping, uh, I was really getting a lot of discomfort in the area where the pocket clip was coming against the skin of my hand. It was pinching every repeated uh, strike there. So as you can imagine, the knife would hit the wood, and then it would kind of pivot it just like this, and it sends the pocket clip digging into your hand quite a bit. Mind you, that's not normal use for this knife. That's not something you're recommended to do. But it is something worth mentioning in case you do decide to bring this knife out in the field uh, and try and do some hard use like that. Again, I did a small amount of batoning on this knife, and it was actually across the grain batoning, uh, not even with the grain batoning, just because I wanted to see how the edge would hold up, uh, putting it through a couple one or two inch uh, little branches. And it did it did all right. And maybe that's what I can attribute the little bit of side to side wiggle with. I don't know if anyone else is experiencing that. But uh, like I said, up and down is solid, and that's the most important thing to me. Um, now, just to show you a uh, comparison, this is the Spyderco Pacific Salt here. This is in H1 steel. Uh, again, this knife is really smooth. This is actually one of the smoothest uh, lockbacks I've ever seen. And I'm just going to show you this for one second. And just the little effort this takes, and this flips out lightning fast, and when you when you depress the lock here, look at that, it falls right down. That's impressive, and that's not something you often see with these knives. But this knife is very, very smooth. Uh, I carry this knife every time I'm, I'm fishing or out near the water, maybe at the beach or something, even though it's not good to get the uh, salt. 
in the pivot here that can cause some problems. But nonetheless, uh, this is a great knife. The H1 steel, I'm just going to make a quick comparison. Although it is much more corrosion resistant compared to the VG10, uh, H1 steel, in my experience, uh, loses an edge quite a bit faster. So this knife seems to get sharpened quite frequently for not a heck of a lot of use. Um, but then again, it is nice having a blade that you know you're not going to have to worry about uh, corrosion with uh, and you don't have to baby when it comes to getting wet in terms of drying it uh, right quickly. Um, whereas the VG10 is a great steel. Like I said before, I use this with a lot of foods, um, especially fruits and vegetables, that kind of thing. Um, I actually haven't seen any corrosion on this blade. Um, I've seen some corrosion on some OS8 blades. I've seen some corrosion on some 8CR13 MOV blades. Uh, I'll be honest, even with uh, my Spyderco Sage 1 here in carbon fiber, this is um, an S30V blade. This is a great knife. However, I did use it for food a few times, and maybe I put it away a little bit wet. Um, I, I don't typically baby my knives very much. I, I know taking care of them is different than babying them, but I did get a little bit of corrosion on here. And I'm not seeing it right now. I, I scrubbed it perfuriously to get it out. And uh, yeah, I'm not seeing any now, but I just thought I should mention that. So uh, VG10 is a great option in terms of corrosion resistance. Um, I've never had a problem with this particular knife in the VG10. Um, in terms of competitive options, what do I carry instead of this? Well, depending on my atmosphere, like I said, if I'm going to be near the water, sometimes I'll carry the Pacific Salt, which is another very good knife. Again, the steel is a little bit softer there, loses an edge a little bit quicker. Um, some of my most popular uh, everyday knives here, um, I would say the Spyderco Sage 1 is a fantastic knife. Um, this looks a little bit more dressy. Um, I like the blue on the Endura because it looks less intimidating. So for those knife people, or for those people that are not knife people and they see you with a knife, instead of them saying, oh my gosh, why do you have a knife? That's scary. You know, you shouldn't have that with you. And I'm, I'm sure anyone who's watching this who's a knife person has experienced that before. I don't typically get the same response with the Endura. Although I do get some acknowledgments that this is a, a good sized blade on here. Uh, Sage 1, a little bit smaller in terms of the blade. And... Uh, two more knives here I carry interchangeably with this is the uh, Benchmade uh, 580 Barrage. Really like this knife, although this can be a, a scary knife to a lot of people who are not knife people. Again, it is assisted opening, so just to show you, you push it down a little bit and you can let go, and the spring will carry the knife back up. If you hear that, it, it's quite loud when you open it. It's got a good flick to it, and I'll be honest, you really don't even need to use a thumb stud. You can just remove the access lock here and give it a little shake, and that spring kicks this blade out it's quite loud. It draws a little bit of attention to it, so for the people who are not knife people, um, yeah, this is not the best option as it tends to scare them. The nice thing about the Endura is I don't always have to give it a nice flick open. That was a bad deployment. Just like that, um, I can just take it slowly, or well, if I really want to look not tactical, or not scary. I'll even use two hands. I'll be honest, I don't know if I've ever used two hands to open it, but you could if you really wanted to, if you wanted to not scare somebody. Um, actually, two more knives I'll show you here is the Benchmade uh, 940. This is a good knife. Um, a lot of people say they'll, you know, live and die by this knife. Uh, I'll be honest, maybe because I haven't Loctited it yet, but a lot of play in this knife. Um, when I tighten it, it seems to only last maybe a week, week and a half, two weeks before the play starts. However, this is a really smooth knife, and this is one that usually when I'm sitting at home, just one I'll pick up to fondle and just play with as I'm watching TV, just because this knife is absolutely so smooth. How many knives do you know that can do that? Not too many. That's impressive. It's a nice looking knife too. Again, not a super intimidating knife, as it does have the green handle scales there and the nice pink titanium liner. So not the most uh, tactical looking knife, but a nice knife nonetheless. Probably, I would say my most carried knife is my Spyderco Southerd here. Um, again, in terms of blade size, very similar to the Endura. In fact, these knives have the exact same blade length, if you can see that there. One thing I really like about the Southerd is look at the thickness of the blade. That's a pretty substantial difference in the thickness. Um, I would say almost up to twice as thick and it carries a lot of the thickness right up to the tip. 
on the southard here on the left. The southard has some nice jimping that goes right across the backing here. Again, these knives are definitely not in the same class. Uh, there's a substantial price difference uh, between these. Um, but I just wanted to show you in terms of size comparison. Uh, and again, I'll be honest, for food prep, I don't typically use my Southern nearly as much as I use the Endura. The full flat ground blade is amazing for cutting any kind of fruits. It offers very little resistance uh, when cutting through, you know, apples, peaches, tomatoes, that kind of stuff. Whereas the Southern really doesn't cut all that well, especially if you're cutting uh, hard fruits. So say you have a pear that's, for example, not very ripe. Um, this takes a little bit extra effort to get through there. Um, so yeah, this is my uh, review, long-term review, of the Spyderco Endura 4, uh, made in Seki City, Japan, if I haven't mentioned that and you didn't know already. This is a great knife, it's one of my favorites uh, in terms of everyday carry, it gets a lot of carry, uh, it's lightweight, gives you a big, capable blade, uh, I've got a lot of experience with it, and nothing bad to say, this is a, a great knife. Uh, one other thing I'll mention, the back of the knife here, it's quite sharp. Same with my Sage 1. Any Anyone who owns these knives will know. Um, I wonder if I can show this here, just on my fingernail. I don't know if you guys can see, the back of the blade is shaving my fingernail. So, I mean, quite sharp the back of these blades. I know a lot of guys take some very, very fine sandpaper and they'll just go over the edges very lightly. Both this knife and the Endura 4. Although my Endura 4 has kind of smoothened out over my time carrying it. But I think it's something I should mention, something you guys may be interested in knowing. Uh, this knife is anywhere from, I would say, 60 to $75. You should find it in that range. It's a great knife, comes in a million different colors. Even some G10 models, which I'll be honest, I'm a uh, excited to try it one day if I get the opportunity to get one. But uh, these are great knives. Uh, I wanted to show you my review here. It makes a great EDC knife. Not very scary looking, not super tactical looking, although it could fill that role if that's something you were looking for. So again, Spyderco Endura 4, full flat grind, VG10. Great knife. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Really appreciate you guys uh, supporting my channel. Uh, if you like this uh, video, please subscribe. There'll be more videos like it in the future. Knife reviews, <clears throat> gear testing, and that sort of thing. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and thanks again for watching. I almost forgot. I wanted to do a paper cut test to show you guys how sharp this knife is. Let me first improve that deployment. There you go. Okay. So let me get, uh, first of all, some basic printer paper. Now, we all know how easy this stuff is to cut, but I'm going to show you anyway. Amazing. Let me just try something here. I'm pulling the paper. So you guys, anyone who cuts paper with their knives knows that it can be a little difficult if your form is not good. Now, again, I'm going to start this, and once it's in, can you guys tell that I'm not moving the knife? Let me give you a frame of reference here. Let me put, uh, let me put my cell phone here. I'm going to start the cut. Now you guys witness, that's just me pulling the paper. So I'm sure everyone's heard of push cut, this is pull cutting and that's pretty impressive. But again, this is just printer paper, what's so special about printer paper? Nothing, it's easy to cut, any sharp knife will cut printer paper. Okay, so I mean, I don't know. Now let me just get a little detail here. Okay, I will stop looking through the viewfinder and I'll just pay attention to what I'm doing. So the pink tails that this should cut, let me get a fresh piece of paper. Okay, here we go. So, let's see, let's see how fine I can get this. See, when my knife is producing that, I like that, that's good. And I can consistently produce that, which is awesome. And this is probably difficult to see, because this is quite small. But I mean, that wasn't even a good one, but uh, let me see.
yeah, so one more time. I would try and film whittling hair, but I try well, I tried already and it's not easy to film. But these little pink tails here, that this is pretty effortlessly cutting. It's making me quite happy. So that's that's pretty enjoyable to do. Let me see, will that focus? Maybe. Hopefully. Yeah, so I mean, nice and small. Again, very little effort. This is, whoop, it's super smooth. But uh, yeah, this paper is easy to cut, like I said already. So, let me grab some lined paper. And this is really cheap lined paper. This is uh, Staples lined paper that costs about 8 cents for 150 sheets. So this paper is very thin. It's on the borderline of uh, receipt paper. And anyone who's tried to cut receipt paper with a knife knows that it's not particularly easy. So let me just clean some of these paper fragments up a little bit. Alright. So this, this is a true cut test. When I sharpen knives on my wicked edge, and they're not screaming through this paper after. That disappoints me a little bit. By the way, that was my fault. I hit the uh, finger troll there. And again, I'm really not even doing a whole proper draw cut motion. I'm just literally pushing the blade here. And these are ever so fine. I mean that's there's all that's fun to do. Now sometimes I like to see if I can cut some arches. Arches are a great way to test the sharpness of a blade. If you can properly cut arches like that in paper, you know your paper's sharp. So let me try a couple more times before I run out of paper. So I mean Hopefully you guys understand now. This knife is sharp. It takes an amazing edge. Look at that. And it holds it for a decent amount of time. So, one more thing, I'll try. When you fold the paper, that's not easy. See that? Okay. Again, Spyderco Endura 4, full flat grind, VG10, great EDC knife, and as you can now tell, extremely sharp. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later.